Mr. Speaker, point of personal privilege. Shall I proceed? Mr. Speaker, I wasn't going to say anything more on this issue because, uh, you know, we're, we're hearing back and forth, but I feel like we're doing it again. When I spoke a few days ago, I said we, we get into this rut where we talk over each other and no one actually wants to hear what anyone has to say. And, and the problem here is you have uh, folks on, on that side of the aisle who are, are focused on this issue of the money this year and in this budget. And look, I'll concede. If, if the, the issue of show me the money, yes, in, in this biennium, there is an increase, but that is not the point. That is not, that is not the point. That, that is not the point, Mr. Speaker. The point is, in this budget, the House budget, which I voted against and I proudly voted against, and if it comes back with that provision in it, I'll vote against it again. House will come to order. Mr. Speaker, the, the language in the budget restructures the way we do SOQs so that in future years, down the road, two years from now, four years from now, ten years from now, the schools that our children go to will not be receiving enough money from the Commonwealth to pay for their education. And to make up that difference, what will have to happen is our local governments will have to put in money. And how are they going to get that money? They're going to have to raise property taxes. So I just want to emphasize again, the point is not what y'all are doing with the budget and the money in this year in this budget. It's the restructuring as it goes into the future, and it is a huge problem that must be fixed for the sake of education in the Commonwealth. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.